Oh, I'm supposed to do that. I'm Jason Lawner. Welcome to yoga. So, um, you know, some days I'm really into the more cerebral, like thinking my way through the body and through practice. And I know that's probably the thing that is at least, you know, more unique that I often bring to classes. And sometimes I sit when I, you know, I'm in the mood to practice or when I want to step onto my mat and something in the simplicity of like doing the basic things and spending the time to slow it down and follow your breath. So like even in all the complexity and all the nuance and all the detail that's in there, I think it's a more advanced component when you have some of that training, when you know how to line things up and your body has learned some of these kind of basics. There's something, there's something magical in the yoga of just taking the time to move through things that you've already done to something I almost never do, repeat a pose several times and to watch the way that these poses not only work on your body, but work on your mind and, and like all of the, le the layers of you. So we'll do a little bit of this, is, is this way of, of almost getting out of your way, following the breath is going to be a really important part of this. Cause, and I'll show you as we get moving, but as if the breath is the conductor and you have to wait for that downbeat. You have to wait for the cue, the time, the pulse in your entrances to move. And kind of how sweet it can feel to do just that. So sit up tall, close your eyes. And it's always there in the singing. I mean, to really listen, to let the sound of the harmonium, of my pitch, to really be internalized and felt. And as you bring your sound in, to do so initially very softly, so you can hear the balance, you can create a really optimal blend. And even as you found that note, there's all these little fluctuations. It's a, it's a constant project to listen and make those small adjustments. So bring your hands together in front of your heart, sitting up tall, and we'll sing. one round of the invocation and an ohm at the end. Take a deep breath.
And to your heart, you can bow. Release your hands, open your eyes, and just come up to stand today. It's a wall. So, I mean, line yourself up carefully. So feet are pointing forward, legs are parallel, push your feet down. Make your legs nice and firm as you stand up as tall and as lifted as you can. And then with the arms by the side, just simply this. As you inhale, follow, take the arms all the way up. And then exhale and follow the length of the exhale down. Just do a couple like that. So you're just like, the, the breath begins it, you move right on kind of the back side of your own breath. Exhale. So, and even just the, like the, the game of can you sync the movement up with the speed that you're really breathing, breathing at. There's that little moment of pause in both places. Do one more time, inhale. This time, all the way forward, fold down, touch the floor. And take a few breaths as you hold there. Pressing your feet down as you inhale, take the crown of the head forward, lengthening. Exhale, same idea, slow. I think like I'm moving through water. Do a couple of those. Inhale. So not worrying too much about how deep the stretch is. Even don't worry too much about how it feels. Just trying to move with the breath. One more time. Inhale. Lengthen. Exhale. Fold. And step your right leg back into a straight leg lunge. Line your fingers up with your front foot. Lift your back leg up strong. Breathe here. Making the spine long, making the fingers lighter. And then place the hand, step back to down dog. Inhale to the top of a push-up. Exhale, slowly to lower down. Point the toes, come up, take a few breaths to come up into this back bend, back bend. Breathing more into your back of your ribs, back of your lungs. So you're just trying to find a little more of a soft first pose. And the breath as if it's kind of waking up different parts. You put your attention even into those different parts. And then back to downward dog. Inhale your right foot forward into a lunge and line the fingers up with the front foot. Make the back leg lift up strong and pause to keep the breath moving smoothly. If you can, I mean breathing smoothly is most important. Breathing through your nose, if you can keep it really smooth, is even better. Good. Take the hands to the floor, step to the front of your mat. Exhale as you fold. Push the legs down, lift the chest, come all the way up to stand. Take the arms up, big full stretch at the top. And then follow the exhale to release the arms down. Keep your chest lifted and tall. One more time. So inhale, rise up. Like you guys know all these poses. So it's just trying to really follow the breath. Exhale, bow. Inhale to lift your chest. This time your left leg steps back, lunge. Same thing. Knee over the front ankle, back leg straight and strong. Push the feet down so the fingers get light. Really relaxed breath. Take one more inhale and then back to downward dog on the exhale. Inhale to the top of a push up. Exhale slowly down. Press the feet down, Cobra. Give it one more breath. Inhale and make the chest rise. And then back, down dog.
Step the left foot to the front of the mat lunge. Make the legs do a little more work. See if you can still keep the breath really soft, really relaxed. And then to the front of the mat, step forward and fold. Push the feet down, inhale the whole way, all the way up to stand, and the arms stretch up. Good. Arms back by your side, staying lifted through the chest. Good. One more time. Inhale. Big stretch up. And then fold forward. Lift your chest. So right leg back lunge. Press your feet down. This time come up. When you're ready, another inhale to rise and stretch the arms over your head. It's like you're doing more as the poses get more complicated. You just have to manage more of these actions at the same time. So it's kind of nice. You start with something pretty doable, pretty easy. Keep pressing the feet down on the inhales, stretch up tall. Stay tall even as you exhale back out. Like you're not shrinking, but it's a softening that you can continue to extend and stay really lifted through. Good. Bring the hands to the floor on the exhale. Step back, downward dog. You can always take extra breaths. On the inhale, go forward to that push-up. Down on the exhale. Cobra or up dog. And downward dog. Right foot forward lunge. And come on up. Feel solid in the, the feet and the ankles, hips more relaxed. And then inhale to stretch and rise up. Make your eyes a little softer, your eyelids relaxed. Make the skin on your hands even feel soft. But continue to stretch. Continue to really elongate, to put intention behind the way you're holding your hands. Take one more big breath here. Even as you exhale, feel your, make yourself grow taller. And then again, hands to the floor. Step all the way back to down dog. Wait for the inhale. Go forward on the inhale, plank pose. Lower on the exhale. Cobra or upward dog. Down dog when you're ready. Take one more full breath, pushing the ground away as you lift your seat up high. And then step, walk, or you could even jump to the front of your mat. Pause to line up your feet. Feet parallel, toes straight forward and fold. Push the weight down like you're trying to make your feet heavier into the floor. But keep the breath calm. See if you can even calm your breath down even more. Take the right hand to the outer edge of your left shin. Keep, try to keep your hips stacked. And then just slide your belly across so it's more o lined up with the left leg. Just a little slide. It's like your torso is penduluming over. And then do the other side. Walk the, uh, take the left hand, grab the outer right shin, slide your belly. So you can imagine like your belly button and your center of your chest line up with that right leg. It's, it's, it's not a huge amount of movement. We're kind of going for like these little soft positions. And then back to center. Ground the legs, lift the chest, come all the way up to stand. Take that stretch at the top, hold your right wrist at the top, keep your legs firm as you bend to the side. And go slow so you let your breath 
like tell you you can go in deeper. If you inhale, you stand really tall. When you exhale, like that, just that little bit that lets you just kind of gently move into it, not in a collapsing way. So even when you move deeper, you're still comfortable to hold it. Push the feet down, stand up, switch. And then take your, your way on in there. So even on the exhales, when you send the breath out of your nose, watch out that you're not creating tension in the chest. That you're just letting the air move. And then push the feet down. Come on up. Release the arms. Bend the knees, that little chair pose, that little squat shape. So toes heavy, hips back. Take your belly in. And keep breathing as you open and lift your chest. The hands can push down against the legs, or they could take any of the other arm positions that you might want to do, out or overhead. If you're able to, again, like, I, like if you wiggle your fingers, like the hands should be soft, wherever they decide to be. The face, the jaw should be more relaxed. See if you can sit deeper, a little bit into it without creating like an, an excessive amount of tension. One more breath, chest up, arms up, and then fold forward as you exhale. Step your left foot back, lunge. So you're coming on up. Take the arms to the sky and stretch. Yeah, so right foot's forward, yeah, exactly. See if you can bring your breath more into the back side of your rib cage, the back side of your waist. This, that little kind of thought about your breath can often have a softening quality to it, a, a little more of a gentle way. And then give the more extension, the lift, through the back side of you. And keep trying to soften as you breathe into the back side of the lungs. Like you're moving your air in there, you're expanding that part that you can't see. So you very much have to kind of think about it, imagine it. And then come down for the twist, left hand to the floor, by the front foot, turn open. Another way that you can help do that is you could close your eyes or just kind of soften the, the, the focus of your eyes so that your, your attention's not just going to where your eyes are looking. Again, you breathe into the back of your the back side of you, almost as if you're kind of rounding into the back. And then, yeah, you're welcome to lean back more, to open a little further. It's all with this like experiment, this game of a softer way of creating these poses. Take the back knee down to the floor, but keep the twist. Push your hips down even deeper and lay back into it. Take the top arm, turn the palm so it faces more over your head and reach that arm straight over your head so you extend through the right side of your body. See if the hips will press down to the floor a little bit more while you, the breath continues to move. You can lean back, you can sweep that top arm back even more as you open it up. Good. Take the hands now to the ground so right inside your front foot and walk them out in front of you. Palms could be down, fingertips just makes it a little bit trickier. Keep working with your back knee so you pull the back knee forward and then all the, you wait all the way for the exhale to see if you can relax heavier into the front leg. The back leg a little stronger so that the front leg can settle more. Good. Then walk the hands back. Sit back and straighten out your front leg. So you're doing like a little runner's lunge, a little hamstring stretch. You could sit up tall if you wanted to, but just little by little. Push the heel down, start with a bent knee, spread your toes, heel to the floor so you make the hamstring strong. And as you exhale, see if you can straighten out through the knee. 
And you can do little pulses of that. The quad, the thigh muscles, are what propel the knee straight. And you're just kind of working around that end range. When the knee straightens those quads, make sure that's what's driving it, the quad, the thigh muscles. You can separate the legs a little wider and keep doing that. You can even do some gentle, like just kind of side to side movements so you, you'll hit maybe the inner thigh, the outer hip, you know, hamstrings are big muscles so you need a lot of different angles to get all of the pieces of it. And if it's really tight, it's fine to keep the knee bent at least some of the time. You'll want to work straight in maybe little pulses, but it's, it, it definitely takes time to get the strength and awareness to be able to hold that. To be able to do that, again, with the body not overly tensing up. All right, and then hands to the mat, step all the way back, down dog. Take a moment to pedal around just to feel what happens in each side. As much as I often sometimes forget it or I'm in a rush for time to work quickly, it makes a big difference. If you, you get the quality just right, you take a little time, you go a little slower. All right, take your left leg to the sky and big step forward all the way up into a lunge. Make your way up, find your balance, lift the arms to the sky. And, and playing with these little contrasts. If you overworked your hands, you know, if you go like, ah, like that doesn't feel right. But then there's also the other version you see a lot is like the hands look like they've fallen asleep, like they're like not doing anything. So there's a way that can you can extend through the fingers. You stretch through the hand. But, but you temper that, you, you keep that nice and soft, you attenuate the amount of effort that you use. Into the back body, send your breath as if you're sliding your rib cage further back so that as you open this a little deeper, you maintain that quality of softness. Come down for the twist, so right hand to the floor. Turn open, left arm to the sky. And if you're really dominant in your eyes, try, you could still look, but think about lessening the impact or the use of your eyes and how that can change you know, your experience in this twist. Breathing more into the back body, taking the throat back but very full, very long through the spine as you hold that stretch. So now the back knee, lower it down to the ground, push the hips heavier forward, turn the palm to face overhead as you stretch and elongate that arm. I mean all the cues, all the things I say have an effect. I'm really super careful whether you notice this or not, like I won't say drop your back knee, like I'm hyper aware of a lot of the words. So, you know, like if you catch me doing that, call me out because I, I promise I won't do it. It's, it, you know, like lower the knee, the way that that shifts the way the pose feels, the way that your body does the pose by the, the words that we know. All right, take the hands to the mat. It seems like a small one, but like I swear, it makes such a difference to me. Walk your hands into that diagonal away from your front foot. Keep your back knee drawing forward. Strength there. As you try to soften, as you try to let go and work deeper into the front hip. They work in complements. The more the back leg will resist and pull forward, the more potential softening, the more potential deepening that you can bring into your front hip. If you don't believe me, I mean, if you try to relax your back thigh and let it drop to the floor, you may find like that blocks your front hip from moving. It really is like that's got to be created first for you to have this room to work deeper into the front leg. All right, walk your hands back, sit back straight in your front leg so you're in a little runner's lunge. 
Make sure you're exhaling as you straighten through the front leg. Make sure you're, you're really pushing down with the heel against the floor. If you're okay and you don't feel a lot of sensation behind the knee, take it deeper. Look to find that position. The other thing is notice if that if you're if when you straighten your leg, is your foot really squared? Is the little toe side of the foot pulled back? Or does it because that's the tendency is the foot wants to kind of sickle and twist because of a little tightness and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's it, Bailey. Yeah. Good. All right, and then make your way back to down dog. Inhale forward to the top of a push-up. Exhale and lower. Cobra or upward dog. Down dog. Now take your right foot to the front of the mat, spin your feet so you end up in a wide stance. Parallel feet and then fold down between your legs. See if you can activate your legs more by, you push the feet down, you try to push the top of the thighs back, getting the seat to lift up. And then as you do more of that, see if you can relax the breath, let the weight of the spine hang heavier. Sometimes little movements, if you just kind of wiggle your upper body around to notice if there's any tension, to notice if there's places you can make these little adjustments. Again, I think it's students who practice more regularly that can be given the freedom to do this. You know, like when, when you're newer, you really got to be told, and most of it is engaged more. But the more you've done this, you, you kind of know where the sweet spot is, where those openings happen. And it really is between good self-effort and surrender. When they match, they're, they're, it's, there's a sweet little change that happens. Walk your hands over to your right leg, take the the twist, so you're lining up chest, belly, oh, in line with that right leg. Once you get the twist, get as long through the spine. Some of that is relaxing a little bit, letting gravity draw you deeper. Good, and then go over, same thing over the left leg. Because, you know, when we take a twist, tension kind of gets built in naturally. So once you're there, see, can you stay in the twist? Can you soften and let that softening help you deeper in? Awesome. They look really good. Come back to center. Turn your right foot over to the right, 90 degrees. Swing your hips back. Your hands are on the floor. Take your hands out a little bit. Fingertips is ideal, palms could be down, but fingertips is going to keep you more active in your legs. Draw your feet together, widen your hips back and apart, and then as you keep your hips back, press forward through the arms, like you're trying to send your shoulders to your hands, but continuing to send your glutes and hips back. Good. Walk the, turn the right foot in, turn the left foot out, walking your hands over there towards the other leg. So again, hips back. And, all, and initially, you gotta start with that, the hip action. So the hips are actually drawing and taking your hips back. Then once you've done that, your hands are just a little extra bonus. As you exhale, feel like you're doing down dog, like you're stretching the arms out towards your fingers, continuing to get lift through your hips. So there's, the spine is long, the waistline's long. You're not, when you push your hands down, you're not jamming anywhere in the spine. 
Good. Walk the hands all the way back to the front of your mat. Step back to downward dog. And then from there, you can either move through that vinyasa or just hold in dog pose. Enjoy your breath. And then bend your knees, step or jump to the front, exhale and fold. Root the legs, lift your chest, come all the way up to stand, big tall stretch. And then arms by your side. So stand on your left foot, bend your right knee in. You can hold knee like this. Yep. You can also hold the foot like this. The tendency, you're going to pull your foot in and you'll lose your butt. So as you try to bring your leg up a little uh, higher, shift your hips back a little bit more. So I think it's like you pull the knee higher and then ground through your bottom leg. So you're really standing strong there. From here, this hip, the standing leg and knee stay forward, open your knee out to the side. Your standing knee wants to rotate, so try it again. Go back to center. Now you could even do this with a straight leg or even somewhere in between, but the standing leg feels like it has to shift out as you pull and open the legs apart. It's like aware in the way that transition happens. I know, it's tricky. All right, come back to center, just release, yeah. You can always do, it's more like, you know, this game. So just so you see, it's like this, because people do this, and you'll collapse and rotate on your bottom leg. It's hard. If you bend your standing leg a little, you keep your hips back, you can help to stay in some of these muscles that'll keep you squared. So grab your left leg this time, so you're standing on your right foot. And when it's hard, just go slower or you get confused or you fall out of the pose. Just like pause and just reset it. Hips back, you pull the knee up, ground through your bottom leg so you're standing tall. Slow, pull the leg out. Got to really notice if anything changed in the bottom leg. Bring it back to center. You could try it with the legs straight if you want. Yeah, they're tricky poses. All right, you wanna do more tricky poses? Try just this. So this is just hip flexor strength. So you're standing on your left foot, bring your right knee up. Try to keep, I mean, lower is gonna be easier. You, keep, you try to keep your knee up and then kick through your heels, trying to straighten the leg. Should get hard to do that. So you can do little bits, and again, if you do it really low, it should be completely doable. It's when you start lifting the leg up and the hip is flexing more that you're gonna feel all the wackiness, all the compensations. I think it's like you're strong through the heel, the bottom leg. Be careful that as you straighten, you don't put it into your back. All right, now do extension. Take the knee back down without holding it at first. Flex your foot and kick the leg back. You should feel glutes engage when you do that, especially on that right side. So then from there, reach back, grab the foot, and you can use your hand to pull it a little bit deeper. You pull it up, but continuing to drive back so the butt is tight. Left arm can go forward, and you could lean into it just a little more. Let's try to drive it from the strength. The back knee, hug it towards the midline. Looks good, Bailey. Good, and then all the way up to stand. Give the legs a little shake out. I even feel myself, because like the hip flex thing is so hard when I do it, it's like 
you want to like almost grit your teeth and be like, I should be able to do this. It's like if you just do a few and you make sure you're not clenching down. It really is a hard position. Left leg up. Cause it's, and it's such a good thing. It's such a function of, of healthy hip flexors to do this, but also mobile enough that when you lift your knee and straighten your leg, you don't like lose your butt or back. Well, both. So knee up, heel forward. For me, if I think exhale, it just, it's like a trick to, to, to remind myself to be a little softer. Hip flexion strength. Good. And then bend the knee, take the leg back, keep working your foot and your ankle so you get into the hamstring, and then kick straight back. And you can always touch, so you identify like that glute muscle is the hip extensor through there. Once you have that, the hand just assists. Grab your foot, keep pushing with the leg, and you can even take the other arm forward and bow a little bit into it. Anytime you lose the balance, go back to the standing leg, make the heel heavy, shift the hips back. Keep the breath moving. Good. All right, come up to stand. I know all this balancing poses. Take, take a moment, stand tall, close your eyes. And even with the eyes closed, see yourself standing with that tall posture make adjustments by feel to maximize your height, your width through your chest and collarbones, and the, the calmness of your breathing. On the next inhale, reach the arms up, following that inhale. On the exhale, fold all the way down, touch the floor. Inhale, chest lifts, and then fold. Step back to uh, hands and knees, all fours. Take your right arm underneath, come down on the shoulder, on the side of the head. And even when you're down there, the bottom arm, the, which is your right arm, give it just like a gentle press down into the floor. And the left hand also, like you're trying to push and widen and open your chest up. If you overdo that too much, it becomes a little muscular. So try, you add a little bit and you kind of see if you can tone it down. But it really is creating this, this big wide chest as you turn and then seeing if you can roll onto the back of your head on each exhale, if you could soften to go further. That image of, or that idea to breathe into the back of your lungs, I find that to be really helpful, especially when a pose starts to feel kind of tight or you feel like you're at your physical limit. Like you can't go any further. See if you can do some of those breath games and change it. Good. On the inhale, come slowly back out to all fours, hands and knees. Take the left arm under, second side. Bottom arm presses down into the floor, and that should activate some of the muscles on your back. Use even your right fingertips to press down, to widen the shoulder blades apart, the chest, the ribs, and holding that width as you turn deeper. I mean, the, the deep pose of this is a shoulder stand. You're on the back of your head eventually. But twist takes some time to let you in there.
Good. And then come all the way back out to center. Step your right foot forward, lunge. Bend your back knee in with your right hand, hold your back foot. Thigh stretch. At first, it's okay. If you lift your hips away from the ground, it's easier to get the foot, to get everything organized there. Then see if you can take the whole thing forward, the hips forward and down to the ground. When you start to feel tension, pause and open up the twist. Breathe more into the back of the lungs. As you do these back bends, the back body tends to kind of crunch down. Try to stay in there. Try to breathe as you, as you find a little more ease in a not very easy yoga pose. Good. All right, so let go of that back foot, but take your hands down to the mat so you're somewhere like this. And then you're going to rock onto the, little, the pinky toe side of the foot, like onto the little toe. If you lift your toes, that'll help you from collapsing your ankle. So you're just kind of rocking. And you can wiggle your front foot to the midline is a little harder out to the side. I shouldn't even say it's harder or easier. It's just different. Like you're just kind of finding little angles. The ankle stays active. Slide your back knee back. Try to lift your butt up and take it back. And when you get into that front hip, you can, you can wiggle around a little bit. You can continue to go deeper by sliding your knees apart more. Good. And then bring the foot back to the floor, step back. Down dog. Take a minute. If you want to do a vinyasa, you can. Or Rhea. Child's pose is a great one, Kelsey. Yeah, rest as needed. Good. All right. When you're ready, take your left foot all the way to the front of your mat. Lower your back knee down. Twist to the left. And with your left hand, grab your back foot. So link up with the foot, get the position. And then, little by little, take it deeper. Send that reminder to breathe fully, deeply but softly. To give as much length to the exhales as you do to the inhales. Awesome. And then let go of the foot. Take the hands back down to the floor. So the reminder, you can wiggle where your front foot is. You can kind of shift it around. But rock onto the little toe side of the foot, pinky toe side. Bonus points. If the heel is lifted, then you really are staying very active. Your knee will be a happier knee, a more protected knee. You drag your front foot and your back knee towards each other a little. Try to stick your butt up and back. If your back toes are tucked under, it's just, it, it's a little easier. If you point your back foot, your leg is more asleep. So it's going to be even trickier to do something that is kind of tricky. Like it is doable, but it's just, it's, it's, it's even harder. When you get into that kind of front hip tightness, you can rock a little side to side. You're imagining your left inner thigh is moving down to the floor much faster than your left knee is.
Good. And then rock the foot back down. Step back, downward dog. Make your way to the top of a push-up. Lower all the way down to your stomach. Rest there. And then bend the knees. Hold the feet or the ankles. Start kind of soft. And as you lift your shoulders onto your back, keep some width even here between the shoulder blades, so you're not squeezing them back. You're, you're holding that lifted shoulder position. Then kick your feet into your hands, rise up towards uh, bow pose, Dhanurasana. Like the area in the bottom of your back of your ribs, like kidney area. If you could send breath into there, create more space, a little more lift and buoyancy, that, does, that goes a long way for softness. Good. All right, let the feet go, flip onto your back. Yeah, so you're laying on your back, knees bent. As if you're doing a windshield wiper, just a little bit. You need to rock your knees to the right. Dig, take your left shoulder down to the ground, the left shoulder under you a little more. Then do the opposite. Take the knees to the left. So you're just kind of like knees go one way, the opposite shoulder digs in, knees go the other way. Until you feel like you have your shoulder blades scooped underneath your back. Press your arms and head down. Breathe first to make the chest lift, then lift your, your hips off the mat. And very much like your breath is very buoyant. It will create lift in your body if you use it and wait for it. So when you breathe in, rib cage expands that ribs and chest float up more. If you do get any little spots in the back muscles, that excessively tighten up, maybe back off or maybe see if you can do the things to temper that effort. When you need a break, take your hips to the floor and really rest, really let the body relax for a minute. You can, you know, windshield wiper, And then the same thing again, bridge pose. Those of you that want to continue on to wheel pose can place the hands by the ears. Work your way to the top of the head and even all the way up. Good. And then bring, when you get back down to the mat, separate your feet a little wider apart. Turn your knees to the right. And then put your right foot on your left knee.
Instead of doing so much of the force to go deeper with that foot that's on top of the knee, see if you can create some internal space, again, by using your breath. Breathe in, expand. On the exhale, soften and settle, and that's often where you're going to feel a little more stretch. And just watch out for how much you really let go. Don't let it get to become a very sharp sensation. Good, and then feet to the floor, knees to the left, do the other side. Left foot on top. And then back up to center. Cross your right knee over your left ankle. Reach up and grab your left thigh, left leg. Push the legs into the hands. And then slowly, little by little, on an exhale, straighten your left leg. Or go towards straight. Ideally, when you get the leg straight, if you're able to do that, then are you able to do that without your pelvic angle changing, without your low back pressing down into the mat? Because then it becomes you're stabilizing your spine and low back as you flex your hip and knee, flex and extend your knee. And then switch left ankle on right leg. Hold the back of your right leg. And even your left leg, your top leg can push into that leg as well. And then in little pulses, stretch up through straightening your right leg. Little bend, a little straight. Good, and then release your legs all the way back to the ground. Roll to your side, come up for fifth. And then sit with your legs out in a straddle apart. You can turn on your mat if you want to, whatever. So a good way, if you're sitting on the back of your hips, obviously if you have you know, prop to prop you up, that's always going to help. But what you can do also is keep your feet down, lift your hip, like touch the floor, lift your butt up, make your legs active, toes and knees up, and then pull your hips back as you bow a little forward. Sit down like that and see if you can keep that position. And see if you can keep that same action in the legs. Walk the hands straight away from you.
On the exhales, you can continue to walk out deeper, but it's a very long spine. When you want to stop is if your legs relax or, or kind of lose their, their strength, or if you're more flexible, if your legs start rocking in, you've gone too far too. So the idea, the belly's always lifted up, but it's as if you were getting your chest closer to the floor. Now from there, walk your hands a little bit to the right and see if you can even there get longer chest, low but long. Go like one or two more handprints over to that side. Then go back all the way to center and start heading to the left a little bit. So if you go just like little bits, it'll kind of keep the twist a little bit cleaner initially. So on this, just this first entry into it, it's softer. And you can go a little further. And so you're trying to limit the, any of that contraction that wants to happen on the left side body. Good, go back through center. This time you can go closer to the foot and the leg but always long. So if you're able to, you're like way beyond the, the foot. And then all the way to the other leg, left leg. Just, it might be just taking it a little bit further, but you could take it all the way to the leg, potentially. And then back to center. Oh, come all the way up, bring your feet together. You can do the same trick to get set. If you lift your hips, pull your hips back, lean forward a little and sit. And then hold the ankles or the ground and fold. you're tighter when you touch the ground you'll pull the, towards you to rock you forward and if you're if it's easy to rock forward you might choose to do the opposite but it's rare that's that's a specific body type that will need that Good. And then all the way up, all the way onto your back, straighten your legs. Bring both knees into your chest, give your legs a little hug. You can rock side to side, whatever feels good. And then reach up, happy baby pose, hold the feet. As you pull the knees towards the mat. Shavasana, or you can take a serious position or whatever meditation position that you're comfortable in.
Let the body relax once you've gotten yourself all set. And watching the breathing is a good focus point, a good dharana to place your attention on. As if you still could breathe down into the back body, into the ground. And naturally, as you relax more, your breath becomes quieter shallower even. Begin to deepen your breath, feeling the breath down into the floor in the back side of your ribs so you preserve that softness. Move your fingers, your toes. And take your time to come back up to sit.
So when you do work yourself back up to sit, it's even nice to pause on your side before you come all the way up. And when you do get there, take your time to even adjust your seat, to pause, so you hold that length in your spine, but gently, easily. Make the eyelids softer, the face relaxed, and fold your hands together in front of you. The breath is you know, the metaphor of we're following something bigger than ourselves. We're following the universal. We're tuning in to nature in this way that our breath is in us, our breath is unique to us, and at the same time, our breath is so much more. And it is this kind of connection to the earth and to one another. So acknowledging that, practicing being sensitive and listening and following to that. Take a deep breath in and bow. Namaste.